Ladies and gentlemen, Kyle of Hollywood, I've heard about it! Yeah, hell yeah! <laughs> Just throw this fan on real quick. Woo! Alright! I think we got, dude, uh... That guy sounded like Beartooth. Yeah, that, dude, that man was pretty cool. Uh, I think we have a, a couple more of the fellas join in as well also, right? I know Scott was asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just trying to figure out how to get onto the link, so I was I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was just You didn't. To... No no one can see you until I'm ready. I have a button that, that brings you on and everything, so it's a big big announcement. No worries there. Sir, I'm I'm oh. pleased to have you on. Uh while we're waiting for everybody, everybody, could you please properly introduce yourself, let us know whereabouts in the world you are right now, and plug or promote anything you like. All right, well I'm Kyle Davies. I'm the vocalist to Hollywood Nightmare. And I think we're going to be listening to a couple of our songs today, so hopefully you like it. Our album Inferno just dropped on the 16th of this month, so everyone go fucking check it out. And um, I'm currently in Huntington Beach, where I live. Heck yeah. Scotty Boy, what's up, dude? How are what's you, up? sir? How are you today? Hey, what's Good. up, man? What's, what's up? up? There's like a weird, it, it's like making a weird sound though. Hear that? It's like fart. It sounds like a fart sound. Yeah. Farting. That's, that is, maybe that's Kyle. He just ran off to the bathroom, I think. I'm not sure. Gentlemen, <laughs> thank you for joining today. Could you please properly introduce yourself and let us know whereabouts in the world you guys are and plug anything you'd like? For Scott. That was a question for you, Scott. Yeah. Are they there? Can you hear us? Yeah. It's definitely your guys making the fart noises, by the way. I don't know yeah. what, what that is, but... We're making a fart noise? <laughs> it's some kind of like weird like noise from your mic or something. I'm not sure. But, uh... I don't know. But, gentlemen, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Inferno came out on Friday. I know this was like a three, two and a half to three year process to get this album out. Probably due uh, a little bit due to the uh, pandemic, I imagine. But take me back through the first song that you guys went in the studio to record that ended up making the album and how we got to this point. Ash. Ash was the first one. Ash was definitely the first one. Me and Scott started writing that right after uh, Scary AF. Cause me and him went through some heartbreak. How did you, how did you meet Scott? Uh, through Musicians Institute in Los Angeles, California. We, we went to college together. Hell yeah. Very cool. Do, do you, do you like use, do you dating. use the knowledge from, from MI often? I never, never, <laughs> never for sure. <laughs> I, I, I hate that school. Hate don't, that school. Go, don't, go, go. <laughs> Say, don't go there. Heard. Don't go there. Hurts. I actually got better as a vocalist once I left. Okay, so you specifically went there to for vocal training? Yeah. I mean, I was 18 years old, and I was like, what do you want to do? And I wanted to go to a school in Hollywood for vocals, and they offered that. And now, thinking back on that, I'm like, what would I even have done with that? anyways like and they're just trying to like produce people to become like session vocalists like they it was just horrible they were trying to tell me that like my voice was too loud you weren't allowed to scream that way you weren't able to do this that, and the other because that was technically wrong but when it comes to art like nothing's wrong right it's just right. weird on things and so i try to conform to what they wanted and then once i left and was like i just took everything that they told me and just blocked it out. That's <laughs> how I became a lot better and more defined my vocals, I guess. Fair enough. I think the first song I ever heard from you guys, which is the first one I'm going to play today, was Moving On. I think that was the first one. And if, if, if this is the one I think it is, it's the one where you guys are like in the bar hitting on chicks and stuff. Is that this one? That's uh, The Haunted, I think. All right. The Haunted is the, the first one I ever saw. I want to play The Haunted first. Um, which I spelled wrong, but, uh, I, when I first saw this, I was like, man, this is like the next Motley crew in, in the kind of, you guys don't give a shit 
kind of rock and roll fashion. That's what the vibe I got when I first heard this. And I was like, I want to hang out with these guys, party with them. And I think we are going to be doing some party today because you boys brought some hot sauce, correct? Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. What's that? So, I said we definitely were in that mentality when we had this song. This song and Fade Out, we were definitely in that party mentality. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. What's up, Luke? Hey, how's it going? It's, I'm going. Uh, it's going well, sir. Plug or promote anything you'd like, real quick, Luke. Before we before we dive back in, if there's anything you want to shout out, plug, doesn't matter. Uh, Luke Nightmare on Instagram. How about that Inferno that just dropped last week? Give me a hell yeah! Pick that up everywhere, especially Spotify, Apple Music. So who who did the production for Inferno? Who'd you guys go to? Frankie. Who's Frankie? Just a just a friend in LA or or like a big time guy? He's he's big time now. He does like uh commercials for Ram. So like the car company. Oh, okay. I was, yeah. I, when I think Wham, I think George Michaels, and I was like, what the f No, Ram R A M. Oh, okay. Ram. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Oh, that I mean that's those are that's big checks right there. Yeah, exactly. So he he did this song, he did the rain. And he also did, uh, which one, which other one did he do? I know he did another one that I can't think of right now. Moving on. Moving on. He did do moving on. Yeah. So you have a couple of different producers that accumulated the whole sound of Inferno. Who else did you go to? Oh, uh, you're talking about music or music video? Oh, uh, music, not music video. Oh, there so... Yeah, that's a different answer. Eric is our guy that uh, masters all our stuff and does vocals, produces vocals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we go to his studio and uh, I record all my vocals at his place. And that's why COVID really hit us because when COVID hit, like um, he wasn't able to take anyone. Oh, so man. vocally we couldn't produce. But funny thing, before we move on to the, before we move on from The Haunted, those two girls in there are Katie O'Neill and Allison O'Neill. One of them is my girlfriend, and one of them is the older sister of her. Yeah! All right, shout out to the ladies. I like it, I like it. Uh, yeah, man. Before we play Jagger Swag, as I like to call it, instead of Temptation, I just think Jagger Swag sounds cooler. Uh, it's what is Jagger Swag. It's Jagger Swag, okay, my bad. Like the drink. <laughs> it's getting better each each time I try to pronounce the name of the song. So Jaeger Swag, is that your guys' uh, drink of choice after an awesome gig? It was. There was an incident? Not mine. It's Scott saying uh, probably Logan, but he's not in the band anymore. It so was a go-to drink for Jaeger Bombs. He always, even to this day, he's always like Jaeger Bomb, Jaeger Bomb. <laughs> Nothing and wrong with a good Jaeger bomb. Get you up and get you down at the same time. But what what is this song actually about? Like, why is it called Temptation? What What is it from a lyrical perspective? Um, well, <laughs> it's kind of self-explanatory, but uh, it, so that girl in the Haunted music video, uh, she's been my girl for almost seven years now, and it's about me and her, like, the emotions I had before I got with her, if you will. Okay. And then the success of getting her. I, I I'm trying to be like PG about it, but you know it's like very raunchy. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so it's kind of that. Like it's it's just one of those like you know when you find a girl very attractive and you want to get her and you you do. It's a hookup. You just song. bust That's out the Jaeger. You, you you tempted. You bust out the yeah. Jaeger. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Jaeger bombs. You kind of get that confidence, and you got that Jaeger swag. Hell yeah! It's seven years. A long time to be together. Maybe you guys, you know, talking about taking it to the next level. Jesus, you're not the first one to say that yet. <laughs> we won't put you on the spot, but let's jam it right now, and then we'll do some trivia and see if I can stump you guys. Okay, really quick though, I wanna I wanna just ask a question about something that happens in this video. And it happens way down here. Who thought of this this part of the of the video? I think that was my idea. It's, I mean it's it, funny. It was an idea that developed because we for sure wanted some sort of blooper to make it funny. 
And then I think someone, probably Kyle, said, oh, what if Dex was in a dress? And then we put the whole, what if it was Dex in the seat instead of the mannequin? And I'm all like, hey, what's up? And then I look over and he's all like, yo, what's up? And I'm like, oh, God. Dex, you're you're bursting out of that dress right there, buddy. (laughs) <laughs> I'd buy you a steak know. dinner. I'm just saying. No, you actually, I think I fit that perfectly. I think there's no doubt about that, that that fit me 100%. <laughs> <laughs> I got much extra footage on my phone of him getting into that dress, too. It was it was just hilarious. It was, it was a story. process. Yeah. I imagine it probably, forever. you didn't want it to rip, just wanted to rip right in half. Uh, that was the end of the music video. We, like, caught it a rap, too. And my cousin Jacques, we used his Tesla for this scene, too. He's actually here. And uh, we were like, Dex, what if you get in this dress and just like sit in that passenger seat? And at first he was like, what the fuck? No, I didn't even hesitate. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm down. (laughs) Uh, And we got him in it and it was just, I don't know. It was more funny for us. I hope it's funny for the viewers as well, but it was hilarious to watch him do that. I thought it was pretty damn funny. I wasn't expecting it. I was like, oh, there's like 20, 20 more seconds. Let me see what happens right here. Uh, let's see, before we, before we go on to the next song, um, I want to do some trivia with you guys, but I'm going to let you pick the topic. Now, here's the thing. If I am able to stump you, I know hopefully one of you guys brought some hot sauce. If not, everyone is totally not required, but it just makes it more fun. If you're being tortured, I'm being tortured while we're still doing questions. You get to pick the topic though. What movie or TV show? You can only pick one and you guys can accumulately all answer separately. Uh, but one, what one movie or TV show can you guys, guys agree on that you've seen the most? doesn't have to be your favorite, just a movie or TV show you've seen so many times where if I ask you trivia on this, you will not get it wrong. I'll give you a second to, to think about it as we play. For all of us or just in, individual, you say? So you guys can individually answer once I ask the question, but there's going to only be one topic. So you have to, you have to mutually pick one movie or TV show. Should we say like the boys or something? Because I know uh, I've never seen the boys. Probably the dirt. No. The, dirt. the dirt. Yeah, probably the dirt. That's a movie. Yeah. All right. The dirt. Let's go with the dirt. The dirt, which is the Motley Crue bio yeah. movie. Yeah. Okay. Um, the rain to me stands out as a track that I think has to have a music video, and I believe it could be coming soon. I hope. It is coming soon. Excellent. Uh, what is the rain about? So, I. Right. I'm gonna answer this in kind of a three-part series from slow motion to the rain to supernova. So let me start with slow motion. Uh, slow motion was a song about like the guy who raised me committing suicide, and uh, like just after I found out that we had a show and shit, and I had to get on a flight from like Albuquerque to Hollywood and everything was just in slow motion. It was so fucking horrible. Like I couldn't believe it was true. And so I wrote that song and through grieving with that comes the rain. While dealing with that, my little sister, Madison Rain, R-A-Y-N-E, she suffers from alopecia, which is hair loss. Mm -hmm. So she she's 13 at the time and she couldn't grow her hair out and so she went through like TikToks, like dancing, trying to make some joy out of life. And she got like cyber bullied for all that type of stuff and she tried to take her life as well. She came to me in the middle of the night saying that she had overdosed and I was like, what do you mean you overdosed? You're right here and she was like, I just took 20 pills of acetaminophen, like I'm going down. And I was like, holy fucking shit like through all of this like now it's it was just crazy so i had to like call the ambulance and like have her go through it so um the lyrics in it like please keep breathing for me or just like how i was feeling when i was in the hospital with her expecting her to seize out at any moment and just like leave us and so it's basically a song of how you know that that story i guess like how it feels to deal with people trying to commit suicide people who succeed people who didn't she's still here today and she's finally growing hair but yeah we wrote that song for her called the rain and she's actually in the music video and then supernova the next song is about even though through all of this bullshit like all this like 
just life trying to take you down, you could come out stronger, you know? So like the lyrics in uh, Supernova is like, it may seem like I'm dying, but I'm bursting out with light. Uh, Supernova in sight, no way to hide from the light, like something like that. And it's just like, even though life will try to knock you down, like it's up to you to get out of this mentality of that shit's just getting worse and make it better. You know, and so those three songs, I needed them to be back to back because they meant a lot with writing for this album. I see that you guys also had rock version removed from slow motion. Like it said rock version here the first day it came out. Yeah, I um, I put it as a single. So as it's almost like a bonus track that uh, you can also find it up there. It's uh. Wait, so, it's oh, really, okay. Yeah, there you go. So this is different than the album one. Yes. Because yep. when I when it's, when it's I first clicked it, I was like, oh, it sounds like the same one, but I, I didn't know if that was a mistake or something. So it is then, it's since been moved over here. Yes. The rock version is what we played at your festival. That's what I thought. But when I went through the album, when I was listening to it the other day, I was like, wait a second, this sounds like the old one. This is misleading how it says rock version right yeah. there. But I see it's been corrected. That's cool. Gentlemen, yep. your dirt... Trivia. All right. Are you All ready? Right. Here we go. <laughs> we were so good in the dirt. Story. In the dirt. Vince Neal gets in a car crash. What is the name of the gentleman that is killed in the car crash? Uh, Razzle. 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 Razzle is correct. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. Nicholas Razzle Dingley. Let's spin the wheel. Gentlemen, pick a number one through 15. Anyone just call out a number? Eight. Eight, heard. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you've picked the second hottest one. Ghost Pepper. So I am going to have to put this Ghost Pepper sauce on a peppercini, eat it, and continue, continue talking to you guys. Let's see. Oh, nice. Let's go. Before, well, just to make it a little easier for myself, I'm going to play Fade Out, which I feel like, actually, if we if you play this one, you always got to play the live whiskey one because it, it just captures, to an extent, how awesome your guys' live show is. And it's kick-ass. I mean, it is awesome. If you get a Luke, chance and you're watching, please go see him live. What'd you say? Luke was in Africa del- during the filming of this. Hey, hey, Africa. Hey, what were you doing in Africa? I was at my cousin's wedding. Dude, that's cr- does yeah, he live in Africa or he just chose to have it there? Uh, he lives in Africa. That's he's, cool. He's literally like a Steve Irwin 2.0. Really? He's like a walking animal encyclopedia. He goes, he like lives in the bush and takes care of animals. It's awesome. That is cool. But, uh, yeah. How do, you, how do you get that job? Or just It just kind of naturally came to him because of living there or he just well the whole africa situation he met a girl in school here and she was from africa with her family uh they're missionaries over there so he married her and now he's over there that's awesome well let's let's uh let's fade out to this peppertini and ghost pepper here we go of all the times that you guys have opened for escape to fate have you had a chance to actually kick it with with craig at all yeah i was on his twitch uh I think last time we played uh, with them. Oh, cool. Was able to, yeah, I hung out with him, his kids, and his wife. I feel like he would be the perfect person to get on like a remix or something. If there was like a an extra verse added to a song, he would slide like right in perfectly with your guys' music. Mm. That That's funny. A lot of people that refer to us as Escape the Fate. It's super strange. I never even thought of it, but... Sometimes I, I, I put like, if you I, I don't know if it's me, but... I always have to figure out like a four fans of and and if I just put like vocals are great, guitars are loud, like people are like, oh, what the f-? like and people don't like to be compared to other bands sometimes like, oh, I don't I don't think I sound like this band at all. So for the lack of a better way to say it, I just always put Escape to Fate for you guys because it has like a similar vibe and, and style and a lot of people <laughs> like that band. So I feel like if they saw it, they'd be like, oh, well, let me let me listen to Hollywood Nightmare because I like Escape to Fate. So that's kind of why I throw mm-hmm. it in there. But 
Oh yeah, no, it's not even a problem. I just I just never expected it. It was one of those things that you don't expect. Like everyone else is a critic, so they'll like tell you what they took from your music. Like a lot of people have said that I sound like Craig Mabbitt, and I'm like, huh. Even on your channel today, someone said we sounded like Avenged Sevenfold, which I've never had. But it's you a know, compliment. Yeah, you just gotta sure. take it as a compliment, I suppose. Yeah, they live five minutes down the street from me, so fuck it. <laughs> you get one guess. Not everyone in the band can guess this because there's not enough answers to guess, but who is the oldest member of Motley Crue? You only get one Mick. guess. Who's the oldest Mar member? Mick Mars. Mick Mars, yeah. It's an easy e one. <laughs> you got it right again. <laughs> You have seen The Dirt, and you're pretty familiar with Miley Crew, apparently. Hell yeah. If you're drinking, go ahead and pour up if you're drinking. Party people! What's, up? What's the hardest, what was the hardest song to record on the album and why? Not necessarily from a vocal perspective, but it could be, but also from a instrument, just a start to finish, the track is finally complete. Which one was the hardest one to to complete overall? Inferno for me. The opening track. Why yeah. I couldn't figure out what to do with it. I could not figure out what the hell I wanted to do with that song. So it has like many different demos and versions before it got to this final version? So many, yes. I think I rewrote it like four different times. Hell yeah. <laughs> what about you uh, instrumentally? Um, I think the instrumentals are about the same level of the difficulty, but I would say the hardest one is probably Temptation because that one has been through a lot of revision as well. Which one? Which one's the hardest one to play live? Like the most likely to have a mistake? We probably won't even notice the mistake. But which one <laughs> is most likely to have a mistake? Fade out. Why that one? The hardest song to sing. Okay. We didn't even get to the. Yeah, we didn't even get to that part too. Usually, usually leave it as the last song in the set. Fade out. Mm -hmm. Or so you Either. like to get the hard one out of the way kind of early. It, at first, it used to be one of the last songs we played, so I had to retain stamina for it. But now we kind of put it somewhere closer to the start. But through the, through the months, it's been easier to perform, for sure. But at first, I was like, fuck. And a couple of people were like, dude, can you even hit that live? And I was like, yeah, it's just going to suck. But yeah. <laughs> I'll get there. I'll get it. <laughs> So one of the things I did notice and is that, uh, huh? No, you go. Oh, I was gonna say the other thing that's really hard about it is the screaming too, like the the lows to the highs, like it will really wear you out if you don't like have the stamina. So anyone that wants to like try to sing the song, I'm like, all right, try to sing fade out, like try to do like the screaming and the singing. And that's where that's where Dex kind of comes in sometimes and does like a background scream to kind of like overlap it to give you a breath or something sometimes, right? Dex is my insurance. Yes, he he covers me on things that I can't keep doing. Well done, Dex. Well done. I yeah, he does it really good, too. Now, Dex, I noticed you have an accent. Where are you from originally? Uh, South Africa. So Okay, so you must know Luke's cousin. I'm just kidding. I, I don't know if you know him at all. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get to, to Los Angeles? Dude, that, ouch, that hurts so much. It just burned me like that. <laughs> um, I got here, I came out here in 2019, and then I lived in the Midwest for a little bit, Chicago area. But Scott, me and him have been talking since before I even left to come to America while I was still in South Africa. And then I just, instead of going home, I flew here for an audition in December 2020 and then uh, yeah I came I just changed everything changed my whole 
life plan, if you want to call it that, and just came out here and just been here ever since. What was the, the initial life plan that got changed? Uh, the initial plan was to come, come abroad over here, make like a lot of money and then go back and exchange it and literally live like a king. And then um, at the same time, carrying on with my own like fitness career and everything that I was doing over there. Um, but I've always played, I, I, I've always played guitar and stuff. Uh, so, and I've played in like bands back home and bass and stuff. And then when this came along and it was exactly the type of genre and style that I was going for, like that I would want to pick if I was in a band and yeah, it all just gelled, you know, and it's all been working out pretty good. Hell yeah. I would definitely say it's working out. Uh, I do want to talk a funny story or two. I know that the, the Canada trip didn't quite work out that you guys, the way you guys want it to work out. Uh, I, I know it's a long story, but let's just make a short relapse of what, what happened. And I know it wasn't your fault, but what happened with the Canada shows? There were seven days total that we were supposed to be in Canada. Uh, one of the days they weren't even able to fill with the show. And then two other days got dropped. Two other shows got dropped. So we're assuming because no one really knows because they uh, vampires everywhere didn't say anything. We're assuming that they were like, oh, four shows is not worth taking a whole trip to Canada for. So we're moving on. And then uh, we the two days before we were supposed to go, we're like, I think we heard from someone who heard from someone else that the thing was canceled. And we're like, wait, what's going on? And where everyone's calling everyone else. We're like, yeah, it's all it's canceled. We're like, what the heck happened? They didn't even post anything on their Instagram. Then the next thing you see that they post on their Instagram was their next show that yeah, they're going to play. Sanator, yeah, they totally... They didn't well, include us in the they, game. Like, any, we just found out online. We, just we out. yeah. And, uh, have you talked uh, to them since then? We've been trying. You know what I mean? We have a deposit <laughs> that's still... <laughs> we've been reaching out. We had we yeah. had vampires in the show like last week. So I could, I could oh, hit up dang. their drummer. I could hit up the drummer. He's totally not in control of any of that stuff. He's just... Uh, a session guy that's become the touring drummer for the band, but he might be able to help uh, if you want me to. So you're still missing a deposit, you're saying? Yeah, if you could tell them we'd like our money back, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I will see what I can do. Oh, yeah. I, I'll honestly see what I can do to try and help out there. Um, let's see. Fellas, what, what do you have lined up uh, the rest of 2022 that you're allowed to tell us? And even maybe something in 2023. I know stuff like this is like planned way in advance and some of it surprises. What are you allowed to tell us that's coming out? Mm. When is the Rain well, music video coming out? Are we Are allowed to know that? Uh, that's a good one. Scott, take this one. That one, well, honestly, we don't have a specific date but i am shooting in somewhere in october okay. right at the middle of october that will be having a little bit of time for this jaeger swags bus to come up until we write on the next one um show wise we have three currently confirmed one is on the 25th of this month in santa ana stages and we have our album release show on the 29th of this month at Club Bahia. Hell yeah. Excellent. And uh, we have a Halloween show coming up as well next month on the 30th of October at Stages. At Stages in Santa Ana. Awesome. Um, and one of the things I liked about about the release that you guys had is you, you prepared with having like visualizers and a, a timed single singles leading up to it like it was planned out really well where when it dropped you had like i said you had visualized for everything everything made i imagine most of the videos were shot way in advance like everything's been done it's just all timing uh do you find that i mean obviously it does but just for bands that may be watching that are trying to do what you guys just did or are doing how would you go about um giving some advice on planning how to do an album release well, do it very ahead of time. Yeah, like, everything. Sorry. Go ahead. The, what is it? Like, whatever music distributor you're with has to obviously run everything through the system and make sure it's okay. Because you don't want to, like, be releasing something 
and then say like you're with DistroKid, you know, your song is now on Instagram because a big thing is to use your in, your uh, your audio on Instagram reels to get that pushed out. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, all those different techniques that you do to boost boost it. But um, yeah, because uh, we even we released the music video and then we were like, oh, let's do an a ad for it. But then uh, what was it? Google had to like process it, which took like two days. So we couldn't really boost it the day of. So, I mean, it wasn't a massive big deal, but it's just a little something. I would also say take the time to make sure the songs you're going to release like sound good. Because I know like a lot of especially local bands, they'll their ambition is to just get a song out and whether it's good or bad, like take the time to make sure you guys have the best quality of material that you can before you release it. Because if you release something half-assed, you know, no one's going to really, they're, they're going to know, you know, and if you take the time to make sure something's dialed in, you know, people will appreciate it and it'll take you a lot further, I would say, to make sure that you're giving out high quality content or at least the best to your ability. What's the worst gig you guys ever played? Everything went wrong at this show. Every single Chain thing reaction. went Chain reaction. Chain reaction. What happened? We had five mi- three or five minutes of setup. And th- that was back in the day when we had a keyboardist. And, like, we were taking, obviously, a lot longer to set up because we're trying to coordinate with the, the guys doing sound with our backing tracks and all that kind of stuff. And our setup time went into our show time and just at the end of the show they just told us time's up turned us all off and all the stage hands started coming on stage and grabbing our stuff and just taking it off how three, many songs uh, three songs in wow how, how many yeah. other bands were after you that night i don't know I, I don't know that was a long time ago Dang, but it was because, like, dude, even no one wanted to work with us. They were just so horrible. So we vowed never to play there again. Dang. And I mean, it happens. We all have bad shows, but that one's just not fair on you guys for sure. Give them a little yeah. bit more of the time than that. Uh, fellas, we got time for one more final question. I apologize, but we, we had to squeeze you in today due to uh, yesterday, but no big deal. But this is a serious final question. Uh, what is, and I ask everybody on the show this final same one. What is a piece of music advice somebody in the industry has told you that actually kind of was like an eye opener, like a big deal uh, piece of knowledge they gave you or a terrible mistake you made early on in your career that you don't want any starting up band to make? One or the other. Mm. Uh, as, as much as you want to perform or like what Kyle said have the best product to deliver you know to make it as professional as possible at the same time use what you've got and just do it and you know because you got to start somewhere and yeah you you can always have the next piece of gear that will make you that much better but you know just use what you've got and then do that I don't know that's that's what I'd say mm-hmm. So don't don't wait forever, because it yeah. could always be a little bit better. So at least put it out it when, it's, when it's almost perfect. Put it out. Yeah, I'd yeah, say I mean, be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself and your ability of what you can and can't do. Don't don't try to put something out there that's just like above what you're capable of because people know. Um, I would say be careful and like know when to say when mm. and uh like there's a lot of shitty people out there mm. and uh be prepared stay for away that. from them yeah don't yeah. give your money to just everyone they'll uh-huh. take it. <laughs> um, i think my mine is more of a like a, a little analogy uh about a thing i heard like someone dropped like a bunch of fleas in a jar and closed the lid for like an x amount of days and he took it off and the fleas were jumping, but they didn't jump out of the jar because they were so used to their comfort zone, like they could only go that high. So it says at the same time, like if, you, if you're if you okay with where you're at and you're comfortable 
like you gotta if you just jump a little bit higher or push yourself a little bit further you can reach new heights so it's like don't box yourself in and don't get too comfortable because there's always room for improvement or like making something better that you is know? a that is a great analogy i've never heard anything yeah. like that before well well said yeah. Chat wants Don't to know. In a jar. Chat wants to know if there's a possibility that you guys can put the lyrics on Spotify. For which song? <laughs> I imagine all of them. Yeah. Oh. Well. Yeah. We're. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. We're gonna do that for a yeah. short answer. So we can then we can all sing along. We know all the words because sometimes when Kyle Streamer is like, Bleh! I don't know what he said right there, but I'm just that just sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, gentlemen, I appreciate you guys hanging out. The album is superb. I, I literally gave it a 9.7 out of 10. What? It's fantastic. I, I cannot wait till the Rain music video. It's my favorite track on it. But there's no skips whatsoever on Inferno. It was worth the wait. And you guys are awesome, man. I can vouch that in person they are just as cool. Uh, really, really cool dudes. The live show is fantastic. Please, if you get a chance to see them live, take that opportunity. Go support Hollywood Nightmare. Gentlemen, have an excellent rest of your day. And uh, kudos on the release, for real. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you, guys. Hollywood Nightmare! Yeah, hell yeah! And if it's okay with you, I'll put this on YouTube later tonight.